seller financed mortgages. So if you sold your home or other property and the buyer used the property as a personal residence, list, uh, list first any interest the buyer paid you on a mortgage or other form or seller financing. So if this, again, somewhat of an unusual situation where you have a seller financed mortgage. Now, again, that's not normally kind of the case because usually what happens when you sell a home, you, you, are, you have a mortgage on it, you have a loan on it, uh, and then the other person's going to pay you. They're usually gonna have to take out a loan, but they're gonna take out the loan from a financial instant institution. They're not taking out a loan from you <laughs> typically, right? And so they take out a loan from the financial institution and then they pay you as you sell the home and then you pay off your financial institution for the mortgage that is outstanding take the the rest of the money and go with it but you could imagine a structured sale where you have a seller financed mortgage situation so if you sold your home or other property and the buyer used the property as a personal residence list uh, list first any interest the buyer paid you on a mortgage or other form of the seller financing. Be sure to show the buyer's name, address, and social security number. So you must also let the buyer know your social security number. If you don't show uh, the buyer's name, address, and social security number, or let the buyer know your social security number, you may have to pay a $50 penalty, which seems fairly low, $50 penalty. but. But if you or the buyer do not have a social security number, use the appropriate TIN for the filer uh, or recipient of form 1098. So 1098 typically reporting form for mortgage interest in that scenario. Again, somewhat of an unusual scenario. So for more information, see general instructions for certain information returns 2023. Nominees. So if you received a form 1099 INT that includes interest you received as a nominee, that is uh, in your name, but the interest actually belongs to someone else. So now you're gonna say, I got the interest in, and it's under my social security number, but it's not for me. Therefore, possibly I shouldn't be the one that has to report it on my return and possibly pay taxes on it. However, the IRS is gonna see it as having been reported on your return because they have the 1099 too. So what do you do in that situation? So once again, if you receive a form 1099 INT that includes interest you received as a nominee, that is in your name, but for the interest actually belongs to someone else, report the total on line one. Do this even if you later distributed some or all of this income to others. Under your last entry on line one, put a subtotal of all interest listed on line one. Below this subtotal, enter nominee distribution and show the total interest you received as a nominee. Subtract this amount from the subtotal and enter the result on line two. So in other words, you're gonna list the amount. Why? Because if you don't, the IRS is almost surely gonna give you a, 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 an audit or something because they have a 1099 listing the amount on their end, right? So you have to list the amount and then subtract the amount out. And in that way, you'll be able to show what's on the 1099 so the IRS can see it. And you'll be able to say, this is why I shouldn't have to pay taxes on it. So I'm gonna reduce it back down uh, and then assign it to whoever should be charged <laughs> the, the interest, right? Uh, to pay taxes on it. So tip, if you receive interest as a nominee, you must give the actual owner of a 1099 INT unless the owner is your spouse and file forms 1096 and 1099 INT with the IRS. For more details, see the general instructions for certain information returns and the instructions for form 1099 INT and 1099 OID. Again, somewhat of unusual situations.